he has totally changed <laughs> since he's been with her. Um, friends say he's not the same Harry. He doesn't look the same Harry. He looks constantly, you know, sad and a different kind of person. Harry and Meghan have done nothing but disgrace a family that stood by them when they left their wholeheartedly supported position within the royal family and relocated to Canada and later Los Angeles. They gave Meghan every opportunity to become famous and make a difference in the world, and they welcomed her into the family with open arms. Rewatch the engagement video if you don't believe me. However, Meghan proclaimed that it was work and she despised it. She persuaded Harry that life in California would bring them unfathomable riches and the chance to become the most renowned couple in the U.S., essentially a royal family in America. Because Harry believed it, they ended up where they are now. They would still be welcome and likely beloved members of the royal family if they had just stopped trashing the family and instead lived private lives, performing charitable work and raising money for topics they were passionate about. However, Meghan was fully aware of her intended course of action, and she has taken it. Unfortunately, she chose to accuse the royal family of crimes against her and tell the world how terrible they were to a bi-racial woman who listed herself as Caucasian on her resume. Harry did the same, and now you can watch his mockumentary, read his biography, Spare, and an interview with Oprah on Netflix. As the Sussexes continue to create ever deeper holes for themselves, the royal family maintains a respectful silence on the matter. Now that they've sunk so far, they can't even see the horizon. Instead, they're trapped within the hole itself. I have no idea if the two of them truly believe that the royal family should have returned their warm welcome after hearing their truth, or if they genuinely believed that the royal family was too weak to take any action against them. Did they think their relatives would bestow upon them the Duchy of Cornwall's wealth, Windsor Castle, or some other grand mansion, and make them joint prince and princess of Wales? Did they really think the family would beg them for forgiveness for the treatment the two may have received? Remember, their proof is completely without merit. Really, did they believe that the royal family would welcome them with open arms if they said they wanted to go back to the UK and be working royals again? and that everything would be the same as it was before they left? I have some news to share with them both. Without any help, Meghan has ruined her their reputation, and has sought attention attention by trash-talking the entire royal family, who has spent the better part of three years spreading false information and complaining about how terrible her life is, who is so unimaginative that not even Netflix or Spotify have taken her scenario suggestions seriously. Meghan is unable to take responsibility for her own plight or the public's perception of her. Thus, she is always looking for someone else to place the blame on. And now she's betrayed the same helpless individuals all over again. Anytime you're not sure who to blame, it's the royal family. Meghan, do you realize how dull, uninteresting, and obvious you are? Please leave. We have seen enough of you to dislike you. Get out of the spotlight for a while and focus on someone other than yourself while you tend to your wounds because, come on, you had to have a lot, right? By the way, I want to ask you if Harry and Meghan will return to England to do charity work. What kind of reception do you think they will receive from the British public? And you too, how do you evaluate the actions of Meghan and Harry? As for me, I just think it's a laughable action. It's okay if Meghan doesn't steal other people's money, but she never gives her money to charity. Or before going to charity, she calls for donations and then keeps 90% for herself, while the remaining 10% claims that she is going to charity. She's such a bitch. To be very honest, as a taxpayer in the United Kingdom, I would prefer it if they never set foot in our country again. When it comes to respect, you have to work for it no matter what field you're in. Was my respect earned the first time I saw them? From the very beginning, I think the British public and the royal family welcomed the Sussexes with open arms. Reflect on their wedding day and remember how the nation wholeheartedly supported the newlyweds. Across the nation, people were so supportive of their union. We showered them with a lavish wedding, a stunning home, a life of luxury, and our unwavering support here in the UK. The news that they were expecting their first child brought immense delight to the entire nation. They enjoyed unprecedented levels of popularity among Britons. Meghan seemed to reject many of the royal customs, and clearly wasn't fond of the British way of life as time went on. Ultimately, it wasn't said in Hollywood. The words, Meghan gets what she wants, were shouted out by Harry. Can you tell me the percentage of folks that always obtain what they want? That's not how most people actually spend their lives. Beyond that, there was the extraordinary secrecy surrounding Archie's actual birth. 
No images or appearances were available, and there was a complete absence of birth details. When a royal baby was born, the British public would often rejoice and greet the new addition with an early photograph of the mother and baby. But that's all. Not even the identity of his godparents was revealed to us. Keep in mind that the acceptance and admiration of the British people are crucial to the survival of the British royal family. Neither of these couples is typical, much less famous. Unfortunately, it seemed like Meghan and Harry disregarded the customary royal birth etiquette and didn't care about the British people's disappointment when they didn't even get to see Archie. As a result, disregarding protocol became the standard. It appeared like taking long vacations overseas became more essential to them than being good stewards of the nation that bestowed their royal position or even honoring their working royal status. Their callousness toward the United Kingdom became increasingly apparent. They were only interested in the perks and titles, not willing to put much effort into earning them. For the ordinary individual who is left with no choice but to conform, life simply does not work that way. One way to show respect is to follow established customs and traditions. After considering their alternatives, the Sussexes ultimately chose to leave the nation that had provided for them in pursuit of independence and a way out of the scrutiny of the press. Even though they were already millionaires, they expected the British public to keep paying for their lavish lifestyle. The British people were revered with that level of reverence. And so, you want to know if they went back to the UK? Will people treat them with dignity? The first time we met, they had my respect, but they decided to disregard it. The truth is that they completely disregarded my monetary generosity, kindness, and emotional support. What, therefore, constitutes appropriate respect in their view. Through recent information, Harry is said to be buying a house to return to the UK. Possibly, he is rapidly making himself more disliked by Americans, who finally believe Brits that the loathsome duo don't know how to do anything but lie, instead of being the victims they claimed. Meghan is equally disliked, according to polls shown in America, but she is their problem like he is ours. Meghan has a history of dumping men once they have served their usefulness to help her social climb, while already having moved on to the next victim. If Harry doesn't get his green card before she has found her next victim, he may well find himself getting chucked out the country with nothing. The one saving grace, I suppose, is it's unlikely Meghan would get custody, especially since she loves no one except herself. People are only a means to an end in her eyes. Charles will probably exert his right as legal guardian of the children to ensure his dearest boy doesn't lose them. It's unlikely America will want to argue on behalf of a two-bit troublemaker-maker against a reigning monarch and political ally of the country when they know he has the legal right. As the loathsome duo could have renounced the children's eligibility to the throne had they wanted to retain guardianship after the birth. But as always wanted to extract any possible benefit. Should Harry return, it will be an ignominy. The country won't want him. The public may allow him to earn forgiveness, as although many Brits will say never if you ask them, Brits are a forgiving nation, as long as you earn it. He will have to go back to doing what is suggested by advisors, stop throwing public tantrums, and tell lies. A bad habit taught by his wife, you can see his transformation throughout the marriage. With him barely being able to say the lies or look at the camera when saying them, and Meghan taking over and prompting him, to him being comfortable telling lies without her presence, and maybe learning from his stepmother how to just do your job and accept hate with grace, in the hope you will get forgiveness. He probably won't be accepted back as a working royal. I doubt William will allow that. With luck, America will follow suit and make life equally difficult for the other side of the duo. Although she will probably constantly play the victim, it took a while for her to break down the level of decency that had been drilled into Harry. It seems she never had that guidance to teach her a correct moral compass, and until Americans do that, she will continue to destroy families and lives in her bid to be adored and rich. Ah, uh, no, I don't believe she was ever pregnant. And any children from a surrogate I don't believe can stay in the line of succession. It would be so difficult to believe Harry again no matter what he said. He's proven to the world that his mother was right when she said, he's rather dim. She said it with love, we do not. In the event that Meghan ever set foot on United Kingdom territory as a member of the royal family, I would be extremely dissatisfied. This would be especially true if she were to begin engaging in charitable activities at this time and try to restore her already tarnished halo. Taking notes, recording talks, 
announcing their departure without consulting anybody and telling the world that the queen does not own the name royal are all examples of the multitude of insults that she has committed against the queen. Given the severity of the situation, it appears that the queen has forbidden Meghan from wearing any of Diana's most famous jewelry. She has been impolite to each and every member of the royal family without exception by referring to them as toxic. Within the context of finding freedom, it appears that she behaved impolitely with each and every member of the royal family, with the exception of her sugar daddy, Prince Charles. She has departed the country without giving the royal family a second thought or acknowledging that she is sorry for her actions, despite the fact that she has incurred a significant financial loss for the royal family, which she is unable to repay at the present time. With her actions and behavior, she has not only offended the people of the United Kingdom, but she has also demonstrated that she is a mercenary and a money-grubbing individual. Her return would not be welcomed in any way. Harry, well, he would be welcomed back, especially if his return was in connection with something like the Invictus Games or the Paralympics, which are both events in which he is quite active and for which he possesses a specific affinity. In the event that he comes to the realization that the life he abandoned in order to pursue Megan was, in fact, a wonderful life, a life in which he was somebody, a person who had the potential to make a positive impact on the world, then perhaps, just possibly, he will also examine what he has now in an objective manner and come to a choice. In the event that Prince Charles decides to stop contributing to their expenses, Harry will be able to have complete independence from his previous life and move to California, where he will be able to live with celebrities such as Ellen DeGeneres and Oprah. He will then be able to make money by wearing a tux and walking the red carpet at film premieres, which he despises. He might even make the occasional video appearance in favor of his charitable organizations, and of course he would be reciting words that Meghan had written specifically for him. But it's okay, I know that sooner or later Meghan and Harry will divorce. They have a marriage that is unhealthy and miserable, and they are a dreadful couple. It was clear to me from the engagement interview that she would not be a good match. At the wedding, the expressions on the faces of members of the royal family said it all. Evidently, it was hardly a cause for rejoicing. It is possible to get a clear picture of how terrible that wedding actually was if you watch it without any sound. I pray that it is over. Despite the fact that I do not like Harry, it has been disturbing to see a person decline right in front of our eyes. Harry will be fortunate if she decides to leave him. I am of the opinion that he is either a victim of Stockholm Syndrome or a victim of narcissistic abuse. Although he should be running, I don't believe he will. I am looking forward to her portraying the conclusion of Princess Diana's divorce in her costume. It is likely that she will assert that she suffers from an eating issue, that Harry was abusive, and that she had an affair with the bodyguard if she follows suit. The divorce is going to be one of the most unpleasant in living memory. This custody battle is going to be quite intriguing. We can only hope that the truth regarding the children will have been brought to light. Given that they were not born of the body, it is already common knowledge that they will not be included in the line of succession. The youngsters will not be able to purchase merchandise from Meghan. I pray that they get a divorce and that we never again have to get in touch with this terrible woman. Are they on the verge of coming to an end? In the event that she has a fresh victim? No matter what, Harry's tragic ending today also stemmed from his ignorance. Never blame anyone. Prince William previously warned Harry about marrying Meghan. Prince William was reported as counseling Harry to take his time. Harry had had several serious relationships before he met Meghan Markle, which is often missed by casual commentators. Those previous serious relationships had floundered as the ladies in question had, in public, cited that they did not want to live a life where they were constantly in the public spotlight. A slight paraphrase of their actual words. Meghan was an actress, so it could be assumed that she could handle the occasional public gathering, as actresses are often presented at various public events to publicize their latest projects. But the occasional publicity event does not compare to the virtually 24 sevenths pressure when a royal is on a state visit to another country, or the repeated public appearances that they have to attend when meeting different sectors of various communities. Prince William was aware from his own experiences what the stresses were both on the royal and the non-royal lady that faced joining such a family. Prince William, I believe, held a view that marriage was for life, and not just for a short period before the individuals moved on to other partners. 
Long-term relationships require both partners to be committed to making the relationship work, and they will face many trials and tribulations if both partners are committed to each other and work at keeping the relationship alive, they can succeed against all obstacles. Those whose foundations are less solid will break up. Prince William had moved slowly, ensuring that his life partner-to-be, Catherine, understood what was required if she did commit to marriage with William, rather than acting for the good of the media, just wanted a few feel-good headlines, centered around the marriage ceremony itself, but would be equally swift to condemn if they smelt a hint of scandal. With the scandal selling more papers was more profitable for them, Prince William and Catherine ignored the wishes of the media and took the time to be sure that each understood what their decision would entail for each of them. Initially, they would be a couple learning to live with each other, but doing so in front of the world with very little private time. Then they would have the other very important issue of raising their children to enjoy a normal life whilst being extremely privileged. An extremely difficult balancing act, which required both of them to be committed and work toward the same objective. As it turned out, both William and Catherine worked together and also reached an accommodation with the media that they could have a level of access that provided a degree of privacy, but the press could have some access to the personal photographs that Catherine took of the family. A balance that resulted in the media having some photographs that showed a young family growing up together, and an official set of photographs to mark important moments in their children's lives, while still allowing a degree of privacy. A long-term project that all parties agreed to and apparently all are satisfied with the outcome. It seems churlish to mention the comparison between their agreements and accommodations with the media and that of William's younger brother and his reactions to photographs of his children. But there is. Significant differences in the way the brothers have approached the same issue. William wanted Harry to consider both what he and his wife wanted to do and to be certain that they could weather the storms that they would face, is facing up to the reality that life can have both ups and downs, and one needs to be able to handle both extremes. Harry did not want to take the long-term view. William got to know Catherine's family very well as their relationship blossomed, and basing his advice on his personal experiences and knowing his younger brother, as well as home, did form the basis of his advice, not a go-ahead regardless, but a please be sure before committing the rest of your life to someone who you have just met. Pedestrian advice, yes. Conservative advice, yes. Advice that can form the basis of a lifelong relationship with mutual fails, most definitely. Did Harry want the same level of relationship he saw between his older brother and his wife? I think he did, but he did not want to work at that relationship, and his intention did not work at understanding what was involved. She had a fantasy view and did not stop to see the reality she would have to live as the wife of Harry. Harry appears to have been afraid of yet another rejection, so jumped in with both feet, while Meghan only saw the global fame that she would receive as the wife of Harry. In my opinion, both wanted instant gratification and did not look at the long-term picture, Harry and Meghan represent the live-for-the-moment's outlook with no thought for the consequences of their actions. While William and Catherine took a long-term view, planning a life together for themselves and their family, the notion of Catherine, the beloved Princess of Wales, losing her battle with cancer is a sobering concept that raises serious concerns for the royal family's future. As the country considers the unfathomable speculation abounds about who could possibly fill her job, among the probable contenders, Rose Hanbury, Marchioness of Cholmundley, stands out as dignified and composed. In stark contrast, Meghan, the Duchess of Sussex, whose divisive antics and obsessive desire for media attention have provoked global outrage, represents a problematic option. Meghan's separation from the royal family and contentious public actions have led many to question her eligibility for such a venerated position. And without more thought, the answer is absolutely no door. Catherine is a mother of three tiny children who require her constant attention. I hope she recovers fully. William has probably thought about this while lying in bed many nights, but he has never spoken anything about it. He doesn't want his children to go through mother loss like he did, especially given how young they were. One thing is clear, mothers are crucial to children. William knows firsthand the difficulties of growing up without his mother. Nobody wants that for the children of Wales. It is awful to assume that William would replace her with a worn-out pair of shoes, and I am sickened to speculate on what they are in this situation. 
There are folks here who truly have the darkest hearts. The two women in question are married. According to sources, they are in a happy marriage. In the improbable event that the worst happens and the princess does not recover, I do not see William marrying again until his children are grown. He'll do his best to raise children, and I hope he's not king at the time since he won't be around to help them when they need him. William will prioritize his children and carry with his normal routine. Duty comes second. He will be out of options. I pray to God to heal the princess so she can be there for the children, and one day, greet her grandchildren, sparing those youngsters from such anguish. I'll remind the person who asked the inquiry that what you send out into the universe eventually returns to you. You never know when you'll be in the princess's shoes, and someone is waiting for your significant other to take your place. I'd also like to remind everyone that Her Royal Highness stated that this is a prophylactic treatment and she does not have cancer. She firmly intends to return to her public duties as soon as she feels better, and her physicians have cleared her to do so. I guess she is eager to get out of the house and back into her routine. So the idea of someone replacing our beloved Catherine in this manner is sickening and terribly disrespectful to both the Prince and Princess of Wales and their children. However, Country Girl had an excellent response. There are a lot of folks with black hearts. Why don't they stay under the rocks where they belong? The good news is that we have a large number of people with clean hearts. We are praying for Princess Catherine's recovery. I know that when she is out and about again, millions of people will be pleased to see her. Also, I can't wait to see Prince William's pleased smile. I swear, some people have become so engrossed in all forms of media that they have forgotten that the Prince and Princess of Wales are real, breathing humans with their own families. They act as if the royals are just a television program, and if one of them dies, a suitable successor will be found. I can't believe somebody would be impolite, crude, or stupid enough to come up such ridiculous ideas in the first place. Clearly, the royals are not actors, nor is this a soap opera or drama broadcast on television. Perhaps the original poster should be asked, who would take your place with your husband, children, and family, and take over your daily life duties if something were to happen to you? Demonstrate kindness, respect, and understanding for a family with two members suffering this dreadful disease. Megan, for the last time, you will not be a princess, a queen, or even a duchess. You've just married a prince. You will never be greater than who you are today. A duchess has no rank in any shape or form. A duchess is just the wife of a duke. It is purely a courtesy title and has no further meaning. A duchess is a commoner, an in-law. You do not, will not, and have never held a title in your own right. You are not called Duchess Meghan, or even Meghan Markle, the Duchess of Sussex. You are simply Meghan Markle, not the Duchess of Sussex. Your dream was not meant to be. I am sorry you wasted your life. The wife of the Prince of Wales is given the title Princess of Wales. Diana gained the title after marrying Charles. Camilla did too, but chose not to use it since her memories of Diana were so powerful. So Charles became king, and William became Prince of Wales, making Catherine Princess of Wales. If she dies and William marries again, his new wife may be Princess of Wales, but the title, like Camilla's, would most likely not be used out of respect for Catherine. No other woman could hold the title. Furthermore, Catherine stated that the treatment is preventative, so my understanding is that she does not have cancer and the physicians are simply being cautious in treating her. King Charles has cancer and is doing well during treatment, so there's no reason the Princess of Wales won't recover fully. Furthermore, why does William need another woman? He is the heir. He will be king, whether he is married or widowed. Rose was is not his mistress. She is only a family acquaintance. What is difficult to comprehend is that this story was not factual and was invented by the disgusting and evil person Harry married. So please leave William and Catherine alone with that Meghan garbage. What about William marrying a four-time divorcee queen slash escort slash yacht girl who can't get enough of yachting? He rejected her approaches once. He will reject them again. He has excellent taste and will not lower himself by associating with the dregs of society. Rose Hanbury is married with children and has never had an affair with William Wales. Meghan cannot inherit Catherine's title. Harry is not the Prince of Wales. The next Princess of Wales is likely to be Prince George's wife, who is currently unknown. But he would be the next Prince of Wales because he inherited the title from his father. Of course, Catherine, the Princess of Wales, continues to wield the title of Prince of Wales and will most likely do so for many years. 
In fact, Catherine is receiving excellent care, therefore she is unlikely to succumb to this condition. If the worst-case scenario occurred, William, a serious and committed human being, would focus like a laser on his children's life and well-being. Not every freshly widowed individual goes hunting for a new mate, and Catherine is truly irreplaceable. You include Rose Hanbury in your query. Why? She is a married woman with a family. William does not love her and she does not love him. Markle, isn't she ecstatic with William's brother? William cannot stand her. Are these the only two options that come to mind? Or are you simply inciting hatred? Your question is filthy and disrespectful, and I have a hunch you know yet don't care. Start a hobby. I'm not sure what the purpose is to pair Megan with other women. She's nasty, and William despises her. Megan's flirty attitude will not alter. Megan has caused a number of problems since joining the royal family, from insulting them to exploiting her name for personal gain. Megan, with her divisive attitude and irresponsible acts, cannot be a legitimate Princess of Wales, capable of fulfilling Catherine's role as a symbol of unity and elegance. Excellent. While Rose Hanbury, with her elegance and discretion, may be a suitable option, Megan would just make people more worried and outraged about her taking on this prominent post. Oh, Megan, find something constructive to do. Hatred, envy, resentment, and obsession with Catherine are bad for both your health and your appearance. This produces stress, which can lead to a variety of ailments and premature aging. If you have children, how about spending time with them? Find a hobby, read a book, take a walk, but remember to contact the paparazzi first. Seriously, will you ever realize that Prince William will never look at you other than from a distance? Honestly, if I were Meghan, I would feel humiliated. How does she compare to Catherine? Catherine, Duchess of Cambridge, was a shining example of beauty, courage, and kindness. Her acts not only solidified her status as one of the most beloved princesses, but also displayed her courage and compassion. Catherine's charming actions, from sending thank you cards and performing acts of kindness to participating in charity events, not only improve her beauty, but also have a long-term impact on her. Her enthusiasm for the community. Given all of this, it's no surprise that Catherine was adored and revered as a figure of compassion and charity. Hopefully, Catherine will fully heal and return to us in fantastic health. The princess provided the first hopeful public indication of her status. Those tough guards clearly care as much about their colonel-in-chief as she does about them. Well, that's all for today's video. Thank you very much for watching our video, and I want to know what you think about these issues. Please express your opinion in the comments below. Hope you will always be cheerful and happy. Don't forget to support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing to the channel. Goodbye and see you again in the next videos.